All right, hello, and how the hell are you guys? Welcome back to the Greasy Paint Channel, and whoa, what do we got going on here? Well, today's lesson is going to be all about how much better you can get with the wet-on-wet -wet technique, or any type of art and craft, really, as long as you remain consistent and keep practicing over time. And underneath the sheet here, we have one of the very first paintings I ever did. Could have very well been my fourth or fifth oil painting using the wet-on-wet -wet technique. And I figured today we would recreate this painting and see how much further I progressed and how much better I've come over time. And hopefully, if all goes well, it inspires all of you to hang in there and keep practicing. So, I'm a little nervous to show it to you all, but are you ready? No, not really. One, two, three! Sorry folks, the old easel just isn't what it used to be. But here it is, one of the very first paintings I ever did using the wet on wet technique. Oh Jesus, oh God, oh, oh Jesus, God, oh Mary, mother of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Like I said, I was only a beginner at the time, right? But if another beginner showed me a painting like this, I would actually say it's decent work for someone who just started. But what are some of the elements and obstacles I'd like to see them improve upon? Uh, for example, I think, the colors I used for the mountains, I was just trying to experiment with something, but I'll keep it more traditional today. On the bottom of the mountain here, I didn't make any mist to separate the trees in the midground. Uh, I didn't make any dark color before I added the orange highlights over here. And those are just some of the few things that I think today we're gonna fix, and hopefully you'll join me and we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna put this painting over here to the side break out my new canvas. I'm going to be using a 16 by 20. Just let me, give me a minute to set it up on the old easel here. Two hours later. Alright, so our new canvas is finally up there along with a thin coat of our thin white medium. And before we actually begin, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell, especially if this is your first time with me. And YouTube has actually been kind enough to give you the option to give me a bonus thanks. It's just to the right of the share button down there, if you could see it. Yeah. Now you don't have to give me a bonus thanks, but it does help me out. And if any of you do decide to donate anything, it just saying that it's there if you want to click it. No, I don't think I will. Now, if we go ahead and look at the original painting, you can see I have this purple glow in the sky. I went and did that already, mixed it up with alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, and a little bit of titanium white. And if you want to get your color exactly like mine, I recommend using a lot more crimson than the blue. So just take our two inch brush and give it some firm taps right in there. And Let's go up to the canvas and let's do it. I'm using these X strokes, just making the letter X like that. And since this purple color is up here, up, oh, got a brush hair already. Of course, that's just, yep, now it's gone, all right. And of course, since the purple glow is up here, like I was saying, that means it's going to be down here in the water. And I'm doing that by just taking the brush left to right. Different strokes now. More brush hairs, my God. And I'll worry about the blue after this. Okay. Now, I'm not going to totally clean my brush just yet. Before I go into the blue, I'm just gonna get some of the excess off with a shop towel. I totally recommend these shop towels for any kind of painting, really, even for house painting. I think there's more brushes on this canvas than in the actual brush. Brush hairs, I should say. All right, there we go. Just gonna get the harsh brush strokes out. Wipe it off again. I try not to use the solvent if I don't need to. 
And where's my palette? Now for the blue part of the sky on top, I've mixed phthalo blue with some titanium white. I recommend starting out with the titanium white and just gradually adding the blue because phthalo blue is a very, very strong color. And there we are. X strokes again, always X strokes for the sky most of the time. And just right about down where it meets that purple. So if we're gonna have this blue in the sky, that also means we should have it in our water. Get a little bit more blue. Oh, I should really start on the bottom and then work topwards. Got a little hasty there. That's all right. And on the other side too, right? Just working my way from the outside in. And up, up and away. I think most of this painting is just going to be watching me get the brush hairs off the canvas. <laughs> I am not confident this video is going to be good. Now what I believe is next is, let's take a look, the clouds, the clouds in the sky. Now if you look at the clouds in the original painting, you can see they're not completely white. They're more, they're more so like gray clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and take some titanium white and mix two values of gray by using some of the ivory black with it. One a little lighter and one a little darker. You'll see why in a second. So, there we are. And maybe this is the one that's a little darker. And maybe a little bit more white. Just want to make sure. I get enough paint to load the brush that we need. Sometimes when you load your brush and you wonder why what I painted didn't work out so well, it's because it takes a lot of paint depending on what you're painting. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, that almost sounded like it didn't make sense, but you know what? I'll show you guys, so watch. I'm going to load the number six fan brush with the darker color first. Let's make the shadows. I'll load that up with the darker color. And a lot of that paint that sits into the brush will shape the brush into what you need. So let's make the first cloud. Yeah, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. And this is the shadow part of the cloud. And I'm just using the corner of the brush. I do have a video on the playlist showing you how to make clouds. So. If you feel so inclined, you can watch that video. Okay, there's one. That's me, second one over here, I guess. Who knows? Just let the brush flow, be free and have fun and have no worries. And one last one, right? Why not? And I'll put it right under here and just using that corner just the corner left or right or you could reverse it if you want to add fresh color okay and remember that's just the shadows of the clouds i'm just going to try to get off as much excess paint with the number six fan brush just try to get as much off as possible Don't need to completely clean it. Because when we go into our next color, it still needs to be a little gray. All right, so there's that lighter gray we made. And get a lot of paint, a lot of paint on there. And right above the shadow part, Just 
will sit the lighter part of the cloud. I feel like that's a tiny bit too dark. That's okay, we can fix that. Just go into our titanium white here. Yeah, there we go, that's a little better. You can fix anything as you paint. Bet you never thought about it like that, huh? And what are your favorite type of clouds to make? Be sure to comment below. Do you like the big fluffy ones like this? Do you not like gray in your clouds? What's your favorite brush to make with clouds? Tell me, comment below, discuss. Okay, now I am going to take, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna fix this here. When you step back and look at your painting, you realize, you know what? I want this, now I want that. So be sure to do that often. Step back, go up, fix anything you need to. Well, that makes sense. All right. Now I will take a clean one inch brush and where the darker gray and the lighter gray meet, I'm just gonna blend that together. Very lightly, I'm almost, I'm almost tapping the canvas. It's very light touch. I'm gonna turn the brush over and the side that I didn't use, I'm gonna blend the bottom part of that gray right into the sky. Try to go light, lightly. I'm doing this by making circular motions. It's a circle. I'm going counterclockwise. I don't really think it matters. If you want to go clockwise, it'll still have the same effect. Okay, and last one. And last but not least, what I will do is now, well, I'll give the brush a quick wipe right on some shop towels. Just lift the top, lift the top. It's all covered in my cloud tutorial. And this is a very light touch again. Very, very light. You have all these brush brush hairs in the in the brush and I don't know, like thousands of them. You really just want to try to use three brush three brush hairs, I should say. And even lighter, this is the lightest touch yet. Back and forth, back and forth. There you go. Just on the top. And there you there you are. There's our clouds for the painting. Now to prepare for the next step, you will need to go ahead and fully clean that two inch brush that you have, or two and a half inch in my case, with your solvent. So I'm just trying to get as much off as possible because the less of that stuff that I need to use, the better. Guys, guys. This is important. Let's check it out. Now, granted, I'm using a product that's safe to use indoors. Be very careful with your solvents. Make sure you have a very well ventilated area or you're painting outside if you're using thinner. Yeah, sorry for taking so long. That, that That's just really fun to do. So let's go ahead and mix up the undercolor for our mountain, which is a lot of phthalo blue. Alizar and crimson, of course. And make sure you mix this color quite thorough. I will go ahead and add some ivory black. Why not? Just keep smushing it in, flattening it out, scraping it up, and turning it over. And when you're happy with your solid mountain color, you flatten that out, 
grab a roll of paint like that. Hopefully you can see it. And you pick where the highest peak is going to be first. And I'm going to say right about right here. There we are. And it comes down, goes right there. And when you do this, you have to press that knife quite hard onto the canvas. Now, I'm going to grab, oh, I'm just going to wipe my knife off real quick. Grab more paint and more so. Here's the next peak. And there's the last one. Scrape off the extra paint. Try to scrape off as much as possible. Go down here. Grab more paint, of course. And next peak will be right there. just goes down and down and who knows and I'm just trying to get as much extra paint off as I possibly can holy look at all this damage now if you were wondering why we cleaned off that two and a half inch brush this is why we're gonna go up here it's, it's all covered in my tutorial on how to make mountains so that's in a playlist too or you can click the upper right hand corner to find it and we're going to go up here and just drag out that color as far as we can. Go up to the highest peak as well. Every peak's going to, this is what's going to happen. And it just disappears down into this mist. This is quite a firm drag. And we do this because we have highlights to put on this mountain. Oh yeah, that is one of the most funnest things I find out this technique adding highlights to mountains so for those of you who still have trouble doing it i highly recommend watching my mountain tutorial on my playlist and if you're still having trouble finding it just leave a comment below and i will leave a link comment below if you have any questions at all i will be happy to answer if there's something i'm not clear on please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks, partner. So now I'm going to take this, this light gray that we used for the clouds, put it over here. And because I don't want, I don't want these cloud, uh, clouds, these highlights to be that white today. I want them to be kind of dull. So add a little bit more. And there we are. You know, it's okay if it's not one solid color. That might even work out better. So we drag that out, get that roll of paint right there, and retouch the canvas with that roll of paint. Once that roll of paint hits that canvas, that's all we need. And we drag it down and glide the knife. We glide that knife. Fix a few things here and there. And we wipe, we wipe the knife so it doesn't chunk up, and then we do it again. Grab another roll of paint, and there we are. Just touch. You can even bounce the knife if it helps. Bounce and glide, glide and bounce. Whatever's easiest for you. Wipe the knife again. And drag that paint out, grab a roll, and just keep repeating the process, really. I promise you, once once you get this down, I've said this before, you'll just want to make a mountain in every one of your paintings. I promise. You see that roll of paint? That roll of paint is the only thing that's going to be touching the canvas. The knife doesn't even touch the canvas. At least, At least not until that roll of paint runs out. Yeah, it's a very delicate process. And 
more highlight. See now, I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but once I get down a little further to where that roll of paint runs out, you can hear the knife kind of go shing. See, you can hear it almost scrape the canvas. And that's because that's when that roll of paint runs out. Huh, seems legit. And this peak here is quite small, so it won't need a lot. And if it's easier to get a small roll of paint on your knife rather than a large one, that's okay. Look, I won't even reload here. Just a tiny bit, because that's just how, how I happen to make the peaks in the beginning. So now I will take, for the shadows, I'll take a little bit of phthalo blue, just a tiny bit like that. And if you think, or if you feel like you added too much blue, just add more white. It's an easy fix. So let's see how that works out. Same concept, except we're gonna go in the opposite direction now. Very gentle touch. And there we go. There we go. And there's our shadow. As the light comes down, it's just giving that inner glow it's inside our mountain. Yeah. Now on this side too here, right? So, and you'll find that you do have to angle the knife certain ways depending on which part of the mountain you're trying to highlight. But no matter how you do that, it's still always a very gentle touch. A lot of people find that they struggle with this, but I promise you, just keep practicing. I mean, that's the, that's the whole point of this painting today, to encourage you to keep practicing. There was a time when I couldn't do this. I mean, just look at the original painting again. Look at those highlights compared to what I can do now. Okay, and over here too. We're almost there, we're almost there. And then one last peek. Oh, I'm sad it's over now. And there's our mountain. Oh my God! Wow! At the very bottom of the mountain, we're just gonna tap a little like that, quite gently. Sort of mist it out so it turns into nothing. Yeah, there we go. I'll flip the brush over, use the other side. Give it another good wipe on those trusty shop towels. And there we go. Just blend that bottom. You notice I followed the angles and all the way these slopes are coming down when I tapped. It's very important. Okay, there's our misty area right there. And those mountains and clouds are up there higher than Seth Rogen on payday. <laughs> now, if we look at the original painting again, we're gonna paint in those mid-ground trees just below the mountain. And a little trivia about this original painting, I think it was the very first painting that I used this round brush. So I'm gonna take it, go into that burnt umber. And if you notice how I load the brush, we're loading it the same way we're gonna hit the canvas by tapping. Really just, just the top part, as you can see. Barely any paint on the bottom. And so what we will do is save some of this misty area. And if you notice in the original painting too, I made those trees line up all at the same size. No, 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 it'd be better if we just 
make them all different sizes, you know? Definitely. Looks a lot more interesting if these trees just grow and just have different heights. And I'm tapping the canvas sort of at an angle. Okay, there we are. And any, anything that I feel like is not dark enough, I'll just go over like that. And see, a lot of that mist was saved. That's what I didn't do the first time, but we learn from those mistakes. And we only learn by doing. This is not a technique that you can just get better at by reading books and looking at pictures. You literally have to just do it and find out what works for you. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. And I'll take that two inch brush, find out this sort of horizon line or this midline and reflect those trees down into the water, just like that. And I went down, now we go side to side, very gently. And we have instant reflections. So easy and so fun to do. Hmm, not bad. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean as much of that burnt umber off as possible from this round brush, because we're still going to use it. And I'm going to tap the same way. We're going to add highlights to these trees that we made into cadmium yellow and also yellow ochre. And let's see how that works out. Just mixing the two yellows together. And I'm not gonna hit the, the brush as firmly onto the canvas. This is more of a light touch now. Yeah, there we go. Make sure you get a lot of paint on that brush. Find that I'm often loading constantly. There we go. And look at look at how that just pops. It's kind of subtle, but at the same time, just pops right in there. And now, if you still have paint on the brush, that's okay because we made reflections for the trees, so those are obviously going to reflect down into the water. Right? And it doesn't really matter. Don't try to, you don't have to be too precise on trying to lining up the highlights here, just as long as you get the color in there. And the same thing, same thing we did there, just be sure to be very gentle. Very gentle. So we went down and what's the next step? Side to side, very gentle again, very light, just like a whisper. If you go too hard, you might just wipe away these highlights in this color completely. Touch some things up, add more right there. Nice. Now I'm going to take the very top part of that knife right there. Like this and if I scratch in like that it looks like tree trunks and branches and it works because it's from far away at least I got that right when I first did this painting I disagree 
Now I'm going to take the knife again, go into our burnt umber. Get a roll of paint, just like we did with the mountains and the highlights and whatnot. And add some land where these trees are meeting the water. I'm sort of going from a left to right motion there. Boring. And when I get onto the right side of the painting, I'll do more so, sort of a uh, right to left motion. This is really boring. You really need to up the energy level. I'm getting sick of this. I'm really just touching with the knife. So it's not a firm pressure. Just quite light. Now go ahead and wipe that knife off. And let's go into some of our titanium white, and you notice I load the knife a little different. I sort of slice across, so it's just sitting on top of the knife like that instead of having the roll of paint like we did the other times. And just make some water lines here, left to right, keep the knife very straight and leveled. And just make a few water lines. Water line here, water line there. As much as you want, as little as you want, just, again, be sure that that knife is leveled. Step back maybe, take a look. Decide to put some water lines over here, over here. And wherever. Now let's clean off that frown brush, get all that highlight off of it that we made for those mid-ground trees. You will find that in this technique, as an oil painter, you go through a lot of these shop towels, paper towels, whatever you have, with or without solvents. And just a heads up for everybody watching, these are oil paints. I get a lot of comments asking me, you know, what, what type of painting is this? Is this oil or acrylic? I use oil paints using the wet on wet technique. One day I will use acrylic wet on wet. You can't just use acrylics on your own. I will buy all the extra stuff that you need to slow down the drying time and maybe do a special episode next season. But this, for now, this is wet on wet with oils. That's good to know. Okay, and if we look at the right side of the original painting, we could see those, those I guess those orange trees, we'll call them. But for now, we gotta make, gotta make that dark color before we add those orange highlights. That was one of my biggest mistakes. So, load a lot of paint the same way, angle that brush, use the top half, and go up here to side. Really bushy looking type of trees gonna look so much better with the orange highlights. It looks like I'm messing up the painting right now, right? Yeah. Oh man, what? you're just ruining it. You're ru look at my lips, you're ruining it. Ruining. What the hell is this? I think I got carried away here and made this tree a little fatter than the original, but that's all right, that's all right. And this is why it helps to have multiple brushes of the same size because now we really have to fully clean this round brush. We got away with it so far, but not anymore. So go into your solvents and well, you know, you know what to do. I take forever because it's so fun. One eternity later. So while you're all cleaning your brushes now, I'll just go and show you what the next step is. I'm gonna take 
a lot of this cad yellow and cad red or cadmium colors and mix them both to a nice hot orangey color well maybe not too hot but and as soon as you are satisfied with the type of value you make depending on how much red and yellow you mix grab that round brush load it up and those and this is the highlights we're going to add it's going to look so good and there we go i'm satisfied our clean brown brush you know how to load it up by tapping it in now and highlight up there highlight up here work in layers Now, if you find these highlights aren't sticking too well, you can take some of that thin white medium that we coated the canvas with, get a little bit on the brush, get some into your orange color there, and they'll stick a lot better. See? You'll find you really just have to touch the canvas. And be careful not to overdo this step. Now that our tree is looking all bushy, we can make we can make some branches and tree trunks here. But take your liner brush and dip it into that solvent. Get that liner brush good and soaked. And if you don't have solvent, regular linseed oil or medium will work just as well. See, what we need to do is thin this paint out. So this way it sticks. There's already tons of layers of paint between the undercolor and the highlights up there. So if we don't change the medium of our oil paint, it won't glide off. And there we are. Maybe we have some twigs just sticking out right there, some branches, I should say. You'll find you do have to go into your your solvent, your, your linseed oil, quite often, just to make sure the paint glides. You get the paint all runny like I am. And maybe just a few more here and there. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I never saw a tree just floating on water. <laughs> just not sitting on anything. Even in the original, I knew that. So let's go ahead and make that landmass, that grassy, bushy landmass that's that's growing out of the tree, or the tree is growing out of, I should say. Sorry, <laughs> can't talk. We'll do that by taking that dark mountain color that we have here with a little bit of sap green. Yeah, there we go. And just load that brush, flip it over, a little bit more sap green. There we are. Get a lot of paint on the brush. We have all this paint, so we might as well use it, right? And just maybe it's growing. The landmass is coming like this. Comes out into the water like that. Yep. Make sure it stays dark. Okay. What is that? And I just realized I actually made a mistake just now and I jumped the gun, made that landmass without making the reflection of this tree there. You have no idea what you're doing. But I'm actually glad that I did that because it gives me a chance to show you guys how to correct it and, you know, show you that your painting's not messed up just because you stepped back and realized, 
Oh no, I should have done this. No, you can fix anything, watch. Bet you never thought about it like that, huh? Look, my, my round brush isn't even clean and I'm not gonna clean it. I'm just gonna use the other side that's not as dirty, flip it over like that. And just add color into the water here. It's not gonna matter because we gotta actually make it look like reflections, right? So I'll flip the brush back over, going to those orange highlights. What well, we had red too, right? Yeah. And watch. Go down. Just like we did in the midground here, and then left to right, very gently. See? Wow. And I'll just give a firm wipe to our two inch brush, get that reflection color out of the way, and go where we made this, our greenery here, and there, more reflections. Make reflections for that. Okay, and left to right again. See? Your painting's not messed up. Anyone can do this, right? Come on, don't bullshit me. And I'll take that dirty brush that we used for this color, go into our yellow, and look at that, we got a nice green. And there we go. Let's just place that in. Make some greenery in our painting. Okay. You can go into yellow ochre as well. And change up the values of our green. We'll grab some white here. What that does is it helps us work in these layers, creating distance, creating definition and depth in our painting so it doesn't look flat. And there we are. Mm, nice, very nice. Now I'm going to take some of the thin white medium that we coated the canvas with once again because we're going to need it. I'll loosen up that paint for some bushes on this thing with some of that thin white medium just go in back into our yellow like that and I'm loading it by dragging it down then I flip it up over and then there we go we have some bushes right there And in the original painting, what I did was I touched the top of that curve of the brush into some red. And what that does is it looks like there's tiny little flowers or red roses growing out. See? Just on the very top. I'm gonna put some here too. Reflect that down into the water, of course. Every color up here is gonna reflect right down into the water. It has to. But you should know how to do this part by now. I'm not even gonna explain it. Left to right, right to left. Nice. Now I'm going to take the knife and get some of our burnt umber. I think we had, I loaded just enough, thank God, onto this palette. And 
a little bit of dirt right there. Just keep loading it and loading it. All right, where the land meets the sea. And over here, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of titanium white. And add some highlight color. Leave it all marbly too, don't, you don't have to make it one solid color. And very gently, if you touch, looks like light is just sitting on top of that mud. There we go. Oh, that was so fun that, you know what? I should have done that to the one in the back. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's not too late. There we go. And if you wipe the knife off, slice into that titanium white once again, you make those water lines. Wow. All right, guys, now we're in the home stretch. If you have a clean one inch brush or an extra clean one inch brush like I do, go ahead and grab that. Otherwise, go ahead and clean your other one. Because just like this bushy tree, we're gonna make another one, but we made that with the round brush. I just wanna show you guys that you can do the same thing. You can have the same effect with the one inch brush if you do not own a round brush. So look, I'm going down like that into the burnt umber at an angle, right? Dragging from north down south, starting north, ending up south. I flip the brush over and there we go. So I'm gonna make this tree right here. Just pushing up. And on this side of the painting, I originally made the highlights more yellow than orange. If you look at the original painting, and I'm going to do that here too. So I'm going to take what's left of our cad yellow, put it right here. A little bit of yellow ochre. And then I'm going to take a lot of titanium white. Drag that out. Yeah. And that gives us a whole new value of highlight color that we have not used or seen before yet in this painting. Even lighter than that. Okay, I will, however, clean that one inch brush good and well. And the reason for that is we're going to go into our thin white medium, get some of it on our brush there, and drag it into that highlight color we made. And you should actually feel how how soft and smooth that color is now. It doesn't even feel as thick when you drag it down. That's exactly right. You flip the brush over and turn. There we are.
And there you go. You got a nice bushy looking tree. Just like we do over here. And you grab some solvent, linseed oil, or whatever you got. We're going to make some branches and whatnot, just like we did over here with this tree. Maybe some are sticking out. There we go. I might even go into a little bit of black so we could see it better. And this is the detail work. You'll find that once you get closer to the foreground and in the home stretch of your paintings, more and more detail. Okay. Now we'll take a clean number six fan brush, go into some sap green here. Mixed once again with our dark mountain color. Get a lot of paint on the brush. It helps to get a lot of paint on the brush for this type of tree we're going to make. Okay, if we look at the original painting, it's right next to this yellow bushy tree we made. So that's where we'll put this one in the remake. Now, I make uh, another video that shows how to make these trees. It's the most popular video on my YouTube channel, actually. I don't know why or how, but basically I'm just using the corner of the brush to start off with right at the top as I work my way down. I could even flip the brush over if I still want to keep the paint dark. But as I work my way down, I use more and more of the brush. That's what happens. Load it up again. And the bigger the tree, the faster you will run out of the dark color. Now, I originally made this tree when I painted it in the first version of this painting, I originally made it with the one inch brush. I find I don't like using the one inch brush for pine trees and evergreens because I have to shape, I have to use so much paint to shape the brush. And I find over time, as that brush gets used, it's just, I don't know. I will show you guys how to do it for those of you wondering or just want to know how to do it in the follow-up to the uh, tree painting to that one. I have two tree videos you can find on the playlist. That'll be in my third version. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? Now we'll go into the thin white medium again. Grab some of that paint and go into our green here. Because there's no way with how, how thick that is, there is no way that's going to stick. Not until we thin the paint out. So we go up here, and just, just a little bit. And try to keep these highlights more on the right side because as we've established in our mountains, that's where the light's coming from. It's coming from the right side of the painting. There we are. And you can take that knife, grab some of that burnt umber, get a roll just like that. And don't drag or anything. Don't move the knife around. Just touch it. Just touch it onto the tree like that. And we have some of the trunk sticking out. See? And if you want to, you put a little highlight in those trunks with the titanium white. And just touch very gently. Maybe more so at the top and not at the bottom because that's, that's where it's gonna catch light. As it gets to the bottom, the tree gets a little bit more bushy. So there'll be more shadows in there. 
one at the top too, maybe. Eh, just a tiny bit, whatever. So if you have only one one inch brush, you might be in trouble. I have two one inch brushes and I still gotta clean them both. <laughs> Let's finish up by going into that sap green, that dark color, mix it all up. Landmass down here, right? And it just comes right out there. And you can just fill it in like that. It doesn't matter at this point. We're in the home stretch anyway. You guys have probably been watching long enough, wondering when's this going to be over. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys and all your support. Always say thank you to all of you who comment. Leave such lovely feedback. Thanks. Really, really can't tell you how much it makes my day to wake up and see new comments from people. New subscribers, see people who I've helped out. Honestly, you guys really motivate me. So we'll just add some grassy highlights here. You know, compared to the last one, this looks like more of a hill than a landmass, but that's okay. We're here today making the painting look better. And you're here to learn today that just because things get difficult doesn't mean you give up. No, sir. You practice and practice and practice. It's really like anything else. Honestly. I mean, think of your first day at the job. Whatever it is you do for a living. It doesn't even have to be artwork. You're a lot better at the job today than your first day when you started. Familiarity is very strong. And if you want certain things here to be lighter than the other, you just go over it. There you go. Holy smokes. Decide if we like this painting and if we do, will sign it because one of you lovely people actually commented on one of my videos not too long ago saying, oh, you didn't sign your painting. I always sign my paintings. It's just, I always feel like these videos run a little too long. So I skip that and I sign it after I end the video. So what do I do? How do I sign it? Well, line a brush, get some of that solvent, get that, get that paint all runny. Actually, we we'll use cadmium red instead. Maybe I'll mix the reds up. It'll probably look interesting. Get a little bit more solvent on there. And see? And the paint just flows right off. And there we are. Well, folks, that concludes today's paint along. And personally, I think it's better than the original. How about you? This is the worst. <laughs> well, regardless, you'll all make better paintings than I ever will anyway, as long as you hang in there and keep practicing. So, I want to thank you all once again for joining me. We only have one episode left to conclude season two. And then after that, it's a little break, but I'll put out more tutorials. So until next time, keep your dreams high and your pompadours in the sky. Let's paint together.